Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi Arcade with zero programming. To get started, you'll need a controller board like this. This is called an iPack 2. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi and then a small memory card. You can use a cell phone charger to power the Pi, a USB keyboard just for setup, and a 12 volt power supply to run the LEDs. Getting the Pi set up is really easy. You download a disk image, you take a simple application that's free that helps you put that image on your SD card, and then you're ready to go. There's really nothing to it, no coding necessary. You stick the SD card into the Pi, and then plug in the HDMI that goes to your monitor. Put your keyboard in, and your power in, and you're pretty much done. It'll boot up on its own, and you can navigate with the keyboard. The system even comes with Doom pre-installed. Now if you wanted to, you could just stop here and have an arcade that you played just with the keyboard. To put your own games on, you put them on a memory stick, plug it in, and then start it up. It automatically copies them where they need to go and enables the emulators that they need to play. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? To make custom buttons, I made the designs in Illustrator and then used this craft cutter called a Silhouette Portrait to cut them out of vinyl to make little stickers. Once the vinyl is cut, you cut a piece of transfer paper about the same size. This is kind of like really thin masking tape. You lay it down on the front of the vinyl and make sure you get rid of all the air bubbles. Then you can cut out the individual sticker pieces. To customize the buttons, you have to take them apart. It's really easy. You just twist the electronics and slide them out. Then the rest of it comes apart kind of as you would expect. Peel off the backing for the sticker, stick it onto your button, and then peel off the front. The design you cut is left there. You can even use the heat of your finger to slide it around if you didn't get it quite centered. Now for some wiring. You're gonna cut several sections of wire. In this case, I'm just gonna show you how to make one part of a daisy chain. Cut two wires, strip the ends, and stick them into a female connector. Crimp that down, and then you've got a joint. Now just do that for every single one of your buttons. You're gonna make a daisy chain of red, of green, and of black. Then for every button, cut a single wire and add a female connector to the end of it. Now this control board is just a quick prototype. If you were gonna make a real board or a cabinet, you have to spend a lot more time laying these things out. For this case, I just put them kinda where I wanted them to be and then marked a general area so that I could cut some holes. I put down a backer board to drill these holes just to minimize blowout. This eighth inch plywood is not really great for this, but it's what I had laying around. Once it's sanded down, I used a piece of one by on the front and the back just to offset it from the table. There's going to be a lot of stuff underneath this. The joysticks have to be screwed on, so in this case I had to add a little bit more material so the screws wouldn't pop through the front. In a final control board, this wouldn't be an issue because you would want to use a thicker material as your surface. Then you can screw on your joystick ball and start dropping the buttons into the places where you want them to be. Each button comes with a ring that you screw on from the bottom to keep it in place. Then you want to lay it down and make sure all the buttons are turned the right direction. Each button has five terminals. The two on the sides are for the LED, the bottom is ground, and the two on the front tell the button to be opened or closed by default. You're probably going to want it to be closed. Go ahead and add the single wire to every one of your buttons, as well as the buttons on each joystick. The terminals on the control board coincide with the directions of the joystick, as well as a whole bunch of different buttons. Take each wire from the joystick and insert it into the correct terminal. Then just tighten them down with a screwdriver. Then go ahead and add all of your buttons. You want to make sure you get the right color LED with the right color casing. And you're going to have to fiddle with them a bit to get them all to fit. Then you're going to wire each one to its relevant terminal. The wiring is going to get really messy really quickly, and in a final board, you want to spend a lot more time on cable management. Add the end of your green daisy chain to one button, then work your way through the rest of the buttons. The loose end of your green wire is going to go into the ground terminal on your control board. Use the red daisy chain to connect one side of all the buttons. Use the black daisy chain to connect the other side, then connect the ends to the 12 volt power supply. Just plug it in and you've got awesome light up buttons. Last thing is to plug the control board into the Pi with the USB cable. Boot it up, and that's it.
So it really is that simple. You don't have to know how to solder. You don't have to know how to program. You just have to be able to strip some wires and crimp on some ends. And if you wanted to avoid that completely, you could buy a USB arcade controller that plugs right into the Pi. If you want to make the Pi a little bit more useful, you can add a USB hub and a Wi-Fi dongle. That way you can actually surf the web from the Pi or you can connect to the Pi from your desktop via SSH. Now this is just the first step in a larger project for me. I'm going to build a full-size arcade cabinet, but I wanted you guys to see the first step to see how easy it is to set up the controls and set up the Pi. You could stop at this point and have a really awesome project to show off and have something fun to play in your living room. Now the first question that everybody is going to ask is where do you get the games to put on this? And I'm not going to tell you. According to US law, if you have the physical cartridge for a game, but you don't have a machine to play it on, then you can legally own the ROM to put on a machine like this. If that's the case for you, be creative. You can find them. I guarantee it. So hope you liked this one, and if you did, let me know in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com. You can find me on all the social networks. I've got a lot more videos and podcasts and live shows and all sorts of stuff. And if you want to keep up with the rest of this project, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.